everyone. Um, my name is Assembly Assembly, and you're watching uh, the Gender Crew channel. Uh, today is Wednesday, which means it's once again time for me to fill in. Um, I nearly forgot today, which would have been unfortunate, but uh, um, here I am. Uh, today's topic is, do you think gender queer uh, should be included in the general transgender umbrella? I think that's the topic uh, for this week. Um, yeah, I think it should, quite frankly. Um, I think that these terms are ambiguous enough to be included all in each other. I think queer is all-encompassing and gender queer is a, is a part of that. Um, but, uh, okay, so I don't really know how to, how to address this topic, uh, but, uh, when I first heard of, of gender queer, uh, it was because of this individual who uh, told me that that's how they identified. And I've never heard this term before, really at all. I've heard of queer and, uh, and all these things, and uh, lesbian and, and transgender and, and, and all these terms, but never have I heard of, never have I heard of uh, gender queer. And I haven't heard of androgynous either. My only experience of androgynous uh, even though I am fairly androgynous, my only experience of androgynous was Pat from SNL. And uh, so my immediate reaction to hearing this person tell me that they're genderqueer, and I'm embarrassed to say this, was, boy, that's obscure, isn't it? Um, in my head, I, I of course didn't tell them this. And I myself identify as genderqueer now, but, but at the time I thought it was a little bit obscure. And I, I think, uh, um, I think, uh, um, hetero acceptance of queerdom, uh, be that transgender queerdom or any sort of queerdom is slow. Um, I think we're, we're just becoming post Ellen, to use that cliche, and uh, our acceptance of even gay people is just coming to be and is still lacking. And I think it used to be that, uh, that uh, gay people and butch and all these things and sissy boys and and everything challenged gender um, in the, the public's mind. And I, I think challenging of gender has been assigned to, in the public's mind, uh, transgender people or transsexual people. I don't think the public has heard of gender queer. Um, so, I think it belongs in transgender. I think anyone who makes themselves aware of gender, be it to perform another one, or just understand it, um, I would consider them transgender just for the fact that they're, they're transgender, they're transcending gender in, in some way. And I think uh, gender queer people have to um, challenge gender. Because for me, that's, that's, that's who I am um, very deeply. Um, and in that sense, I'm gender queer and transgender. I think the, the, the two experiences have a lot more overlap than people believe. And I believe in the, the public mind, the uh, gay experience, which is what's in the public mind, has a lot more overlap with the transgender and the gender queer experience than we're made aware of. And uh, yeah. So, 
I'm, I'm proud to be part of the transgender umbrella in that I will be continually challenging gender and the social what's challenging gender now in the public mind is transgender it's less gay it's more transgender so in that sense yes I think gender queer should be considered transgender <laughs> but uh, so that's that's this topic I want to address the topic that I missed a couple of Wednesdays ago which was um, which it kind of I think um, is is interrelated a little bit uh, which is um, which is Leo is uh, gender queer in birth sex are there more people who are born female bodied uh, than male bodied which is the seems to be the assumption I don't know <laughs> I know it circles I'm in and in the circles I'm in um, I've, I've seen more people who are female bodied, I think. Um, but I don't really know if that's true. So I'm not going to speculate whether it's true or not, but, but uh, um, I'll tell you about one feeling I have about it. Um, I think uh, gender, it's, it's, I think okay. So um, for me, I'm I'm genderqueer slash androgynous. That's always how I describe myself because I'm genderqueer and I'm also really androgynous looking. And I, that's I think that's how people norm relate to me. Who people who don't know what genderqueer is, they'll at least know what androgynous is, um, and we can relate on that level. But I'm also fairly masculine in appearance, and, and I think. There is a prevailing movement uh, for things to be androgynous. I, there's a prevailing movement uh, towards masculinity for androgynous. And I think that speaks to how normalized masculinity is in, in society. And uh, I think, um, I think uh, people who present in a feminine way are considered to be gendered. Whereas people who don't are considered ungendered gendered and, and, and normal just because you wear baggy clothes and shop in the men's department, this doesn't make you ungendered. In fact, it makes you masculine gendered. Um, but uh, it's easier to move in that direction because I think of how normalized it is for masculine to be considered ungendered. They have studies about how women's brains are different, which speaks to that. You have endless attitudes that speak to that. Attitudes like, like, uh, well, you must have an iron deficiency because of menstruation, which isn't necessarily true. Uh, link below, um, the title, not link below, whatever. Um, so I think, uh, I think people who present masculine, people who present um, oppositional to how they're raised, uh, that being female-bodied people, are more likely um, to be considered fucking with gender, I think, and therefore are more likely to fall into gender queer. I think. I'm not sure. It's a re it's a real interesting. Um, it's a real interesting. Uh, I would like to see some metrics, quite frankly. I'd like to see some statistics. Um, how many feminine people consider themselves transgender? Um, how many feminine, pe feminine um, presenting people consider themselves gender queer? Um, there's, a, there's a big, um, oh, my roommate's here. So <laughs> talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. We're here. We are here.